Hello astronomers, Jimmy Newland here. I wanted to show how to make three color images using Aladdin and then from there to overlay data on top of that so you can see individual things in the files you've taken. Aladdin requires access to the internet. If it is on a computer, if you're trying to use a computer that's not online, that's not connected to the internet, it, some of the features aren't going to work. There are other ways to make three color images as well. You could use uh, Photoshop, you could use the GIMP, you could use uh, Astro Image J. There are a lot of different things you can do, in fact. DS9 is another one that comes to mind. Aladdin has the benefit of uh, pulling in data from the internet and overlaying it directly on your file. So first thing you need to do is open a local file. I saved mine on my desktop. I've got a blue, a green, and a red here. Remember, in case you don't already know this, maybe maybe this is new to you, but there is no such thing as color data in astronomy until you make that happen. When we put a detector on a telescope, the photons themselves are not, they don't really have color in them. It's something that we detect with our eyes and our brains and uh, cameras don't have that ability built in. Well, detectors don't have that ability built, built in. So astronomers typically are not interested so much in what the photons will look like as the information they contain. So each of these was taken with that in mind. There was a blue filter put over the detector and the photons were saved and a green one and then a red one. If you were using like a, a smartphone, the camera software and hardware together they make up for the fact that the detector doesn't understand color and they add that after the fact. So representative color is just something that's always true in astronomical imaging. So a lot of times people think that what they're seeing is not really a, uh, the quote unquote real colors and that's because that's not how these systems work. We have to do that after the fact. So I'm gonna open the blue one first. Not that I really care which one I do first. And then local file, I'm gonna open the green one next and I'm gonna do the red one last. Make sure you give them good file names. So I've actually changed the name of these, whatever long file name they had been, I've changed them to the name of the object and then the color. So it's a lot easier to uh, find them when it's time to fiddle with them. So over here on the right hand uh, side, you'll notice it's put the three, open the three uh, files. Each one is its own individual thing. And if you, little checkbox next to it, if you click it, It'll load that into the current view. And it's interesting to see which things show up where. It may not mean a whole lot uh, without knowing more information about the, the length of the exposure and the camera type and lots and lots of other things. Uh, but that's okay. I wanna make a pretty space picture. So I'm gonna go to image and I'm gonna say RGB image builder. And it brings up this dialog box with the three files I've loaded and the red one I'm going to make red, the green one I'm going to make green, and the blue one I'm going to make blue. Make sure that they're all selected correctly. This is, by the way, another reason to give them good file names so that it's much easier when you're right here. And then I'm going to hit create. And it notice the, over here on the right-hand side, there's a new stack, a new plane right there. Not a stack, a plane. Each one of these, by the way, is called a plane. And as you check the little box, that's the one that's visible in the current view. And there are some things inside the current view that as an astronomy nerd, but not an astronomer, I don't want. In fact, if I'm trying to impress my social media audience, I probably want to get rid of some of the things that are displayed, like the little red arrow, the reticle, the north and south, uh, I mean, north and east uh, compass pieces, the... Uh, angular size stuff. I don't want any of that. So I'm going to go to overlay and I'm going to uncheck overlaid info and I'm going to uncheck target arrow and I'm going to uncheck, well, I'm going to select no reticle instead of simple reticle. And now this thing is empty. Notice when I move my mouse around, by the way, it shows me the color values in there, red, green, and blue on the, the top right up there. So I'm almost actually at a point when I'm ready to save this as a picture. But what I want to do first is go to image and pixel and pixel contrast and map. And it brings up this dialog box where you can adjust by grabbing these little arrows. 
each of the color values, and I'm going to play with this. There's a lot that can be said about this, um, especially if you know about it. Color depths and histograms and other computer science-y nerdy words. But the truth is, I'm playing with this until I get something I like. So I want it to be, maybe I decide, oh, I, re I really want this to look very red. I'll drag these around. We'll say it looks very green. Actually, if you go f the further left you go, the more of it is on. So, so that's pretty. That's, that's quite pink. And you can play with these sliders until you get it to do what you want it to do. Um, let's say that I want to make it look. I want most of the stars to show up. So I'm going to line all these little arrows up here. And then, sure, look how blue that is. Maybe I decide that's too blue, which I have. And I want to drag this guy over that way. And maybe I think there's too much green. I'll drag this that way. Now it looks, well, sure, why not? And I'm going to hit, uh, oh, by the way, you can reverse the, uh, the, all of the colors at once. And that makes for a pretty cool effect as well. You can also, if you mess it up, hit reset, and it goes back to the way it was. Notice, by the way, that uh, with the pixel mapping left, at default, it's kind of hard to see what's in the image. So as a matter of fact, I should have said that to start with. I'm going to drag these back over here and make it, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to put each of the uh, little arrows in a straight line with the center one just touching the histogram graph. Let's see what that looks like. So I'm going to do that for the red, the green, and the blue. And Somebody watching this may know a lot more about Photoshop and be able to tell me why that looks the way it does. But I don't care. So I'm going to hit close. And I've actually right now got a picture. I can scroll with my mouse in and out and zoom in and out. You could use this, the zoom bar over there. You can at this point choose file and save the current view. And it will, uh, you can make it a JPEG, a PNG. I recommend a PNG file. But if you choose Save Current View, it actually puts a little watermark at the bottom that says Powered by Aladdin, which, uh, I don't know, you may care about, you may not. So what I would do is I would make a screenshot. So I zoom out until I can see the entire image. And then, since I'm on a Macintosh, I'll choose the way I would make a screenshot. And I'm going to use the Select tool. And there, I made a lovely image of this globular cluster and it's representative and maybe you think it's too blue you can go back to the uh, uh, image and pixel and contrast map and play with it and make it whatever color you'd like so that's actually all there is to making a picture with aladdin you can there are more things you can control but um, that's actually a good start 